Yes. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Yes. Welcome back to episode three of the Mark Agnesi Show. Yes, we're back. We've decided to do it again. Yes. We no. We took uh, we took last week off uh, for Thanksgiving, um, but we're back here. Um, still no mics, but we're stepping it up a little bit. Not only do we have the live studio audience. I got hair and make well not hair but I got makeup. I got makeup this week, trying to make it look a little bit less like I like I you know I've gotten sleep in the last four years. A uh, couple other things, huge congratulations to last uh, episode two's guest Taylor Goldsmith got married to Mandy Moore the day after he was like uh, we premiered the show and the next day was their wedding which was great. Congratulations to them on tying the knot. We had no idea that that was the next day. That kind of was like crazy timing. Uh, and also, uh, it's official. You know it's official when there's the shirt. The, uh, yeah, the brand new Mark Agnesi Distress Logo tee for the Mark Agnesi Show. It's up there on uh, markagnesi.com. If you want to support the cause, go check that out. Um, my guest tonight, my dear friend, uh, Jared James Nichols, stops by. Oh, it's going to be great. We both rocked a lot of double denim. Uh, we talked about why neck pickups suck and why you don't need to use a pick. It was great. But first, before we get to Jared, we've got another new segment we're going to try out tonight. It's a new segment I like to call Dumbass Guitar Accessories. Dumbass Guitar Accessories. You remember when we said it was going to get better? Yeah, it's probably not going to get better. Well, hey, so I've started this new segment called Dumbass Guitar Accessories because no matter what, like once a month, I see something on the internet that I go... My God, that is the most dumbass guitar accessory I've ever seen. Uh, this week, I posted this on Instagram uh, at Mark Agnese. If you haven't, hey, follow me on Instagram for this kind of stuff. But um, just watch. Okay, first off, the first thing I really love about this product is how discreet it is. I mean, you barely notice that it's there. Uh, it reminds me of uh, Wayne, no, Garth in Wayne's World. He goes out to the car and gets that electronic thing and he cattle prods the guy. It kind of looks like that. You have to, like, how do you talk about buckle rash? How do you even do that? And still, the whole thing is now like Chad the douchebag with the acoustic guitar that's fucking up my night playing Wonderwall. Now is like Dylan at the Newport Folk Festival going electric and he's taking it to the beach. He's got peg khakis on and he's rocking the Epi Gibby way up here because he's such a badass. Like, who is coming up with this shit? It's obviously not guitar players. Every time I see one of these kind of infomercial things, the guy doesn't even look like he knows what the hell he's doing. It's obviously, it's just like, who is coming up with this stuff? Guys, nobody needs this. We don't need this. It's just making everybody look uncool. And, and I know it's on Kickstarter or whatever. Don't, don't, don't kickstart this idea. This is one that should go to grab. That's, there's your first look. We're going to be doing more, many of these, but this is your first look. A dumbass guitar accessories. Dumbass guitar accessories. All right, so imagine this. Stevie Ray Vaughan, Albert King, Leslie West, and Zach Wilde were all in this weird guitar orgy, and it spawned a child. <laughs> Two things would be true. First of all, it'd be the ugliest fucking kid that anybody's ever seen. But the second thing, is it would probably play guitar a lot like my guest tonight. Neck pickups be damned. Check this out when I sat down with my homie, Jared James Nichols. Hey everybody, Mark Agnesi sitting here on my sofa again in my living room. My guest today I'm very, very excited to have here. Uh, you just got back from ruling Europe, Mr. Jared James Nichols. Cheers, man. on the couch. Thanks for coming by, man. Glad, glad to be on the couch, man. This is great. Thanks for glad having me. Glad to have you here. You've been making noise for a really long time now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to think that that's 
really starting to build some steam here and people are really starting to figure it out. When did you start playing? Because I know you're not like a lifer, right? This is something that no, came no, no. a little bit later. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the thing was I started playing guitar when I was like 15, going on 16. And um, what, what did it? What was Dude. the thing? Was it a was it a, a band? Was it a guitar player in general? Was it just the I have to? It was it was more like a thing like you know you'll get it because growing up in the Midwest like in Wisconsin there wasn't a lot of options for a kid at fifteen or sixteen. It was like either I was going to play sports, um, each club. I'm yeah, sure dude, I was going to be in the, <laughs> I was going to be in the FFA. Uh, yeah. No, and uh, it was like. I wasn't really wanting to go down like the sports route and a lot of guys, you know, like I saw had guitars and they were playing and, and it was funny. I remember going to like a, a talent show when I was a freshman and seeing like the seniors and they were playing like a Sabbath cover and these dudes like pure like stoner guys but with long hair and everything and I was like, what? what's up with these guys, man? You know, so I like, befriended them and started playing with these guys and um, the, the bridge kind of broke for me though when I was like, my mom took me to like a blues jam and she's like, yeah, you got to see these guys play. And we went like close to like the Illinois border and I got up on stage and played with these guys and I was like, oh, this is cool. And then someone's like, dude, you should check out Stevie Ray Vaughan. And then? El Macombo, dude. And, uh, oh, El Macombo. Dude, I wore that like, I wore a hole in the VHS and I think I owned two or three copies of it. It was on I, DVD. If it's I, probably yeah. my favorite blues show. Of Did. all time, just complete fire from start to finish. Yeah, it was like seeing an it was like seeing a naked girl for the first time. I was like, I watched it and I was like, I gotta see it again. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what was that? You know. So after that, it was like, I was full in, like full on. I was like, I'm gonna be a guitar player, man. When did you come out here? Well, the first thing was I was practicing right, and I sent like a video submission to Berkeley in Boston, and I got in, and I went to Berkeley. I went to Berkeley for like when, six months. When would that have been? That was when I was 18, uh, like 2007. Okay. Yeah, and um, I went there and I tried that. And I absolutely was like, I hated it, dude. It was... Yeah, I, I can imagine. And nothing against, nothing against knowledge. Yeah. Nothing against all of the theory and nothing against all this shit. Blues guitar player, rock guitar player. And yeah. It had a lot, you got... It's either in, it's either in here or it's not, and there's totally. no level of theory that's going to teach you how to do it. Totally, you either got it or you fucking don't got it. And it was hilarious, you know. I went there and I was like, "Yeah, I want to play blues and rock." And they were just kind of like, "Okay, okay, well, well, uh, well, we're going to start you on a keyboard, and you're going to learn jazz theory." And yeah, yeah. I was just like, "What the? What am I doing with my life right now?" You know. Good point. So uh, I got out of there, and I was talking to friends, and they were like, "Man, you should just go to California." And I was like, what am I going to do in California, dude? Like, I don't know anyone, you know, like, it was just another thing that was like so far away from anything I knew. And I remember I was like, well, if I kind of spring this into my parents and I'm like, well, I want to try and go to school out in California. <laughs> and they were like, the school thing. oh guy. yeah, oh yeah, you know, it, just so I could have some support. And um, they kind of knew what was going on. And I was like, yeah, there's a school in Hollywood called uh, MI, you know, and they were like, yeah. And I was like, well, maybe I can get into it. And at that point, I was already playing pretty well. And um, I sent like the the like submission or whatever. And uh, it was like, yeah, I got in, and they gave like a scholarship. And then I said to my parents, I was like, look, they're already giving us like, you know, this is gonna be <laughs> great, <laughs> dude. And uh, then they're like, okay, cool. So I worked a job landscaping for a year to save up money to come out, you know, like just to rent a U-Haul and to like yeah. take off. Yeah, so. It was like a big deal to come out to LA, and that was at the end of 2010. What was the Les Paul thing? The Les Paul thing was, um, it was like the week I came to LA, week of the orientation, there was like a little sign and it said, Gibson and Daddario present the Les Paul tribute contest. It was like, <coughs> send a submission of you playing to get in, and it was gonna be like 15 guys, and basically, May the best man win. It was like very vague. And I was like, okay. So I sent like a demo I'd made back in Wisconsin. I sent it and they were like two days later, like, congratulations, you got in. And I remember it was like in the, the MI concert hall and the talent was so different. There was like a dude playing like Metallica rhythms, like super, you know, like, like and then there was like a jazz guy and then there was like a fusion dude and pure shredders. And then I went up there and I was just playing like basically like white kid Albert King, you know? And I remember though, I played like How High the Moon at the end, like an actual Les Paul awesome. thing. And um, the judges were like Carl Verheyen, uh, Michael Melinda from Guitar Player, 
guy from Gibson, um, uh, a guy named Phil Jargui from Diderio who um, is now literally I still work with him, and it's like people that I've I've met and you know know now, and you know I built my career with Phil, and uh, it's funny though. I play, I do the thing, and they come off the stage, and um, I was like, man, I don't think I won, I didn't think I did that well, you know? And I went up and I won it, and it was really cool, because you got like a year uh, Diderio scholarship, I won a Les Paul Gold Top. Very nice. Sold that thing about three <laughs> weeks later. <laughs> for rent. <laughs> yeah, dude. I feel you. But yeah, there was a, a few other things, like... Uh, you won an MI award. Yeah, right? I won an MI award, like the, uh, the outs most outstanding player of the year. So that was cool. I gave it to my dad, and he's like, what's this? And I was like, they said I was the best player at the school. I was like, he's like, oh, that's great. He like said it on the thing. <laughs> Next time I went home, it was like propping up a door. Yeah, okay. it's got significant weight yeah. to it. But uh, yeah, I did that, and uh, like I won a Schechter guitar at one point. Like, these How were, long did it take before you sold that? Dude, that Schechter was gone so <laughs> fast, dude. I, I, that thing was gone so fast, I flipped it. I was like down at the Guitar Center in Hollywood. I want to talk, <laughs> go back to what we were, what we were just talking about. Um, yeah, yeah, losing the pick. Who inspired? Was it Albert? Was it a variety Albert. It of It was guys? Albert, and it was like Derek Trucks. Like, like I remember when I saw Derek play without a pick, and 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 Albert, the way that it sounded, I was just like, man. And then I started like putting the pick under the finger and just trying to like do the kind of Com you know combination of stuff. And and then I just realized I was like, man, I just like the way that that sounds. And it was funny though when when I was playing with a pick, man, I still have it. A Stevie Ray Vaughan strap, two tube screamers, like. Uh, I had a Super Reverb and a Vibrolux. Like, that's what the I rig. had, dude. The rig. Yeah. I had the rig. And I was like, I just want to sound like Stevie. Like, that was what I wanted to do. And I remember it got to a point where I learned really quick after Berkeley. I was like, how am I ever going to sound like myself? Like, how do I sound like me? You know? And it's like one of those questions that you really can't answer. It's, it just has to come, I guess. And uh, I, I remember I was like, well, I thought about it. I was like, well, I really love playing with my fingers and I was so in love with strats at the time and I remember my friend left like a, like a faded Les Paul studio and I was like dude I'm just gonna try this and I'm, <coughs> I'm one of those people when I do something like I totally am like fully committed no. so like I found this guy's Les Paul and I was like messing around with it and I was like man I can get way closer to that Albert King thing on this than I can on the strap and um, I just started doing it but it was funny because when I ditched the pick I was like a little scared because I was very like, dude, I could play without with a pick, and then all of a sudden I was trying to play without it, and it was like, uh, there was like, there was like a probably like an eight month learning curve, learning curve where I almost had to relearn everything with this hand. What do you feel is different? different? I mean, do you feel like? Or, I mean, I, I put that less. I mean, I know you don't play with a pick a lot, but could you play like one of your your like a yeah, signature yeah. Jared James Nichols lick oh. with with a pick? Oof. And then get, ditch the pick and let, let us kind of hear. I'm going to use the uh, signature. Get the dick pick. The dick yeah. pick. Give the plug the dick pick really quick. Uh, let's plug the dick. The, what's funny is, like, I'm going to go to the neck pickup because. Which is something really funny because and we'll yeah, talk about we'll this talk about later that. too. But, but with the pick, I feel like it's so sharp. It sounds so sharp. So with like, with like a pick, if I went like. Um, That's like a standard lick, right? Yeah. Whatever. But then when I play it with the, I feel like I can dig in more. Dynamically, the, there seems to just be so much more happening. It's subtle. Most people, if you weren't a guitar player, might not even. Notice. A lot of people are like, "Dude, what's this guy's deal?" He's like, you know. But for real, when I play with a pick, and it's like you do like. A, great. But when I do it with the fingers. And then the Albert, uh, the Albert Collins stuff, and I, I just realized I like that. I think when it came down to it, I was so sick of like, because I remember I was like doing all like the, um, you know what I mean, and I and I was like I never play a lick like that. So it was like, <laughs> Not one. I've Not never even. played a lick like that. Everything I play is, you know. And I was like, I'm just gonna do that, you know? I mean, 
And then when it came down to it, I was just, I'm so glad I did that because it, everything changed and the way I phrased stuff changed, the way that like, the way I thought of stuff, even if I played like a lick that was like SRV in my head, it would come out different, you know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody that I know who's really great yeah. plays fucking intense all the time. Yeah. How? I play What's your day? Uh, you seem like one of those guys that yeah that, that you are constantly working on your craft. What it, what is what is your average day? In ter I mean, you just you just pick up and start playing guitar. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, it's that's the one thing I think too. It's like you know this because you're a real player, but like it's almost like it's not. I don't know if the right word is like an affliction, but it's like you're always, dude. I'm always thinking about guitar. Like I'm always thinking about it, and it's. It's crazy, ever since I was like 16, 17, so like a regular day when I was a kid, like it would be, I would wake up two hours before school. Cause I heard about, I, re I remember I read like an article with like Zach Wilde. He's like, oh, I'd play before school and then I'd play, and, you know, all night after. And I was like, well, I'm gonna do one better, dude. I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna play before school. I'm gonna play at school, you know? And um, I remember I got it to the point where like at school, I joined the jazz band. I literally flunked out of it, but they gave you an hour a day <laughs> to practice. So I was like in a room, I was like, you know? So anyways, um, it, it, it got to the point where I was playing, I would say at the, in the prime, like, I don't know, 10 to 12 hours a day. Let's talk about guitars. Yeah. Black Les Paul custom single pickup. And I remember I started looking them up and sure as shit, they made they like made a run them. of them. Yeah, they did them. And I was like, I gotta find one of these guitars. Couldn't find one, couldn't find one. And lo and behold, it was like, I was on like reverb and there was one there. And I remember we were on tour with like Leonard Skinner and I was like, I want that guitar. It was like 2000 bucks. It was a one-off custom shop and it was 2000 bucks. I was like, is it fake? You know, like what's the deal? I didn't have the money. So I had my girlfriend use her credit card and she paid for it. <laughs> and they never done that before. Exactly. Jack's credit card back in the day never got lit up for a guitar <laughs> once. Never <laughs> once. Did. Exactly. I got the guitar and I was like, oh shit, you know, this is what's up. And then I started modding it. So like I, I took the stop tail and I made it like a, like I drilled for a so, yeah. wrap around. Fucked it up. Screwed up. I put a dog ear in it. Um, you know, different stuff like that. But like, then I started like getting into it and like, it was like, it became my thing because I was like, when I started thinking about playing guitar, it was like all about that guitar. You know what I mean? How important is that to your sound now? It is. It's, it's really important. Would you say dude. that that might've been one of the things that helped yes. take you out of the thing? Finding, finding the right instrument totally. that, that fits you? Totally. And it's funny now because um, I still play my original, but now like, I have such a good relationship with everyone at Gibson and Epiphone and um, so like they've been giving me Epiphones because I dig the Epiphones too like they made a 55 model and um, it's it's like this it's got a big big neck and it's it's heavy but it's like I just take it and I just Frankenstein it, just it I put a Duncan in it and I you know volume tone and that's it and how many of those have you gone through because you're a, you're a tough player I have I'm on my fourth one dude you can yeah, you can fucking play through a I can, guitar. I can play like, through them, dude. Yeah. It's it's like if I don't think a lot of guitar players get it because maybe they don't go that hard, and I don't mean that in like, but it's like, dude, when I, you're when you're really when you're full on, it's like driving a car at top. You know, like yeah, when you really yeah, there's there is no going back on it. And uh, those guitars, I mean, I'll break the plastic covers. I mean, dude, I just eat them. And it's like, next, next, next. What's the amp? What's the amp of choice right now? Amp of choice? Well, Blackstar gives me amps for touring and recording. And um, I use, basically, it's it's like a 30 watt little tube combo. And um, I just run it full. Just um, you know, it's funny because, you know, as guitar players, and I used to be like this totally, was the gear. And it's, it really is all about that guitar for me. But like, I've found that the gear is just the medium between me and the thing. You know it's what I mean? It's not become the thing. It's not the thing. Pedals. Where are we at with pedals? I usually don't use them. If I do, I just put like a boost on the top of the amp. Something in front yeah. of the amp. I used to have a pedal board and it's like the same thing. You know, I had it. I was like the Tube Screamers, a Fuzz, a Univibe, all this stuff. And it's like, it's all fun and it's all good stuff. But for me, it was like, not a means to an end, but it was just like, 
it wasn't getting me closer to what I was really craving, dude. And what I and the th the funny part is, it's like a lot of guys go through it. What I'm really craving is just a great guitar into an amp at proper at proper, proper volume. volume That's which all, is all it really is. Need. Yeah. Thanks, Thank brother. you for coming by. Cheers. Check out Jared James Nichols' new record. Check out all of his records. Yeah. Actually, what is the best place for that, by the way? Do you want to go to iTunes? Do you want to go to Spotify? I, I, your website? Whatever? iTunes or Spotify? I mean, honestly, Spotify. Go check is it killer. out, man. It's this is this is the real thing, you guys. I'm really, really uh, excited for what's to come for you, man. I'm it's gonna really, be great, man. I'm really, really proud of what you're doing. Thank you guys for coming by again. Thanks for coming to the house. Check Cheers. out Jared James Nichols online. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. For my full unedited interview with Jared James Nichols, make sure you subscribe to the channel below. Uh, I promise all the unedited interviews are coming. We have more behind the scenes footage, extended takes of different things, more performances. There's all sorts of stuff. Make sure you subscribe to the channel below. And make sure you check out Jared online. If you're on Instagram, check him out at, at Jared James Nichols. And you can find him anywhere uh, you get your music, Spotify, Apple Music. Check it out, Jared James Nichols. Okay. And Let's see, what's pissing me off this week? I gotta talk about something really quick because it's been pissing me off for a while. Last summer, uh, the Washington Post posted this thing, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, The Slow Death of the Guitar. And it's been bugging me for a long time, and I know it bugs a lot of people because they're like, the guitar's not dead. But on paper, the guitar kind of seems like it's dead. They see sales have been down from 1.5 million units a year down to a million units a year, and just people aren't buying these guitars anymore. What pisses me off is the misinformation there because here's what's really going on. It's different in this industry than any other industry, but they keep applying the same rules. Like you think about cell phones or computers. Think about your cell phone from five years ago. If you had five years ago a cell phone in your hand right now, you'd go, what is this ridiculous piece of shit? I couldn't even use this. <laughs> you know, it would be so outdated. Guitars don't get outdated. Guitars don't need to be updated. There's no software updates. I mean, if anything, we're still chasing technology from the late 1950s in electric guitars. We're chasing the late 1930s in flat top guitars. But just because new sales are down doesn't mean people aren't playing guitars anymore. I mean, look at Reverb.com. That website's been blowing up for the last few years. Look at how much eBay has taken over everything. Yes, yeah, sales have been declining, but guitars don't disintegrate. They don't get outdated. They don't, dis like, I, it just, it's not like any other industry. The guitar market is fine. Everything is fine. People haven't been looking hard enough to discover new guitar music. It's out there. And if you look, you will see, the guitar is not dead. The guitar is alive and well. Everything is going to be fine. There's great deals to be had on used gear. And the new manufacturers are going to have to start doing better in order to get people to buy new stuff. But everyone, relax. The electric guitar is going to be fine. So there it is, man. Episode three of the Mark Agnesi Show is in the bag. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you check out my guest, Jared James Nichols. You can follow him on Instagram at, at Jared James Nichols. You can find his music wherever you get your music streaming services from. Make sure you check him out online. Make sure you check out my website, markagnesi.com, for all the new uh, Mark Agnesi Show merchandise if you want to contribute to the cause. There's all sorts of fun stuff up there. Uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram as well, at Mark Agnesi, for all of your daily guitar nerd content. And finally, to take it out tonight, here's one final time of me and Jared uh, back in my living room playing old Leonard Skinner classic, Tuesday's Gone. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. <laughs>
it is. There it is. <laughs> Cheers, man. Cheers, mate. Awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh.